Uh, look, I think the future is bright um, for uh, for all of us. Uh, first of all, you know, I, I mourn at the tragedy of this for those who who've lost their lives, for their loved ones, for those who've been um, seriously ill, and of course, economically, for those who've been affected, um, their livelihoods and their lives um, uh, damaged. They may think at this day, uh, at this point beyond repair. That is a, a great and shared uh, tragedy, and uh, that's where we have to begin all these conversations. Uh, but that said, as for the future. You know, this has been a remarkable and painful reset for all of us. And I think that for the film industry, we're re-examining uh, techniques and methodologies of how we can, uh, you know, work together. We're looking at uh, what is of value. We're looking at um, also how important it is um, that we create uh, a fictive world. If you consider how most people are spending their time, they're, they're, they're sitting at home looking at our work. We're keeping uh, a nation and large parts of the world um, sane because uh, simply locked away in a space with only your nearest relatives as much as you love them is uh, painful beyond all measure. To be able to escape into an imagined world, um, to share someone else's vision, to get a new perspective on the human condition um, has a magical and remarkable therapeutic uh, properties. So now that we know that what we do is important and we know there's a need for it, practically, we have to recognize that because no one's shooting films right now, uh, when this is over, there's going to be an incredible rush to make as many uh, films and TV shows and uh, uh, streaming episodes as we possibly can. So the demand is going to be breathtaking, and we all have to be uh, ready. And this is what I mean about uh, the difference between a, a successful freelancer and an unsuccessful one. The successful one makes use of their downtime to become better at their jobs. So I hope every writer and director and cinematographer right now is working very hard on perfecting their craft because be it a month from now or three months from now or six months from now, the demand on our skills and our artistry is going to be uh, beyond all reason and measure. And we're going to be working very hard for a very, very long time. Sure, there'll be changes in behaviors. Um, you know, there's the, the DGA and uh, the, uh, I think, SAG and uh, IATSE, I think, came up with a document today about how we might all work together about you know, masks and social distancing and all those sorts of things. And we'll figure that out as we go. But for anyone who thinks that this is the end and there'll be no films, uh, it's not true. We're going to be busier than ever. The problem is going to be the actors. Um, A-list actors are going to have a very hard time rationalizing, um, you know, risking their health and their lives and their careers by coming onto a set. But more significantly, um, whatever their, their goodwill may be, uh, if you start shooting a $100 million movie with uh, Matt Damon, and he becomes ill the second day of shooting, and you shut down, shutting a film that size down is something that uh, is beyond all reason or comprehension and something that no insurance company will cover. So that's mm -hmm. where the difficulty comes. So I think we'll see a change towards independent films, a great opportunity for relatively unknown actors uh, where people will start taking risk with actors and relying more on the quality of the writing and the quality of the, the actor rather than just say the fame of the actor to uh, make the film uh, work. And then I think crews will quarantine together. Uh, there'll be smaller crews, so smaller risk of infection. And I think we'll find a way to uh, produce a lot of great movies in the next year.